I'm Joe Bainline. And I'm Paula Thomas. With News Wrap, a summary of some of the news in or affecting LGBTQ communities around the world for the week ending February 13th, 2021. The abduction of two young refugees from the anti-queer pogrom has put the Russian region of Chechnya back in the news. Seized from a safe house about 400 kilometers east of Moscow, the 17- and 20-year-old brothers were handed over to Chechnyan security agents on February 4th. According to the Russian LGBT network, they were taken to their hometown of Gudermais, just outside Grozny, the Chechen capital. The network helped the brothers escape Chechnya in June 2020. They were among the refugees featured in the multi-award winning documentary, Welcome to Chechnya. They had been charged with running a government opposition channel on the messaging app Telegram. They endured months of detention and torture in what have been called secret queer concentration camps and were released after recording a coerced confession. Lawyers for the two brothers are being told they're witnesses in an old criminal case but are not themselves being charged. One of the lawyers asked why they could not have simply been deposed at their Russian apartment instead of being abducted and taken back to Chechnya. There was no answer. Russian LGBT network spokesperson Tim Bestsvit told the Moscow Times that the young men are tired and frightened and being pressured to refuse a lawyer. He warned that they are in mortal danger. Going back to 2017, Independent journalists have been confirming what both the Chechen and Russian governments have vehemently denied, that suspected LGBTQ people were being rounded up, beaten, and tortured to reveal the names of their friends. It's not known how many people have died during interrogation. Chechen President Ramzan Kadyrov has claimed that there are no LGBTQ people in Chechnya, and the ongoing vicious crackdown seems to be an effort to make his wish come true. Previous sanctions by the UK and US government against Kadyrov and his allies have seemingly had no effect. Recently installed, openly gay, US State Department spokesperson Ned Price addressed the situation in Chechnya during his daily briefing this week. He told reporters that the Biden administration is profoundly concerned about the two brothers. President Biden was at the State Department calling for global LGBTQ rights the same day that they were abducted. Drag queens are a visible presence among the thousands protesting last week's military coup in Myanmar. Huge demonstrations on the streets of the capital city of Yangon are demanding the return of democratically elected president Aung San Suu Kyi. Even though consensual adult gay sex is still a crime under old colonial era laws, The Guardian reports that the most flamboyant drag queens have nevertheless been applauded by other protesters. 21-year-old Min Kant goes by the stage name Walkie Talkie. He told the news outlet, People on the marches tell us we should have our rights. They're proud of us. LGBT are protesting in their heels and waving rainbow flags across Myanmar. The former British colony of Burma has been embroiled in ethnic conflict for decades, but The Guardian notes the military coup has united disparate factions in opposition to the takeover across the country. Strangers flash three-finger salute signs of resistance to the junta. Truck drivers offer free rides to the demonstrations. Volunteers keep the protesters hydrated under the hot sun while others share food. Even members of the depressed Muslim Rohingya minority are being welcomed. They've been targeted in the genocidal military crackdown since 2017, a human rights crisis the government of Aung San Suu Kyi has failed to address. Drag queen Kant admits that fighting a new military dictatorship will be a difficult task, but says that we all know what we're facing. We ask that the world help us. And he hopes LGBTQ involvement in the protests will make us more accepted. The U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development is assuring LGBTQ people that federal law specifically protects them from housing discrimination. Their February 11th press release affirms the Biden administration's desire to eradicate bias based on sexual orientation and gender identity in all agencies of the federal government. The administration, in turn, is standing on the 2020 Bostock v. Clayton County Supreme Court ruling. It said that federal law protects LGBTQ people from discrimination in the workplace. The HUD press release concludes that, The Fair Housing Act sex discrimination provisions are comparable in text and purpose to that ruling. Janine M. Warden is the Acting Assistant Secretary of the Office of Fair Housing and Equal Opportunity. 
She said in the release that, every person should be able to secure a roof over their head free from discrimination. And the action we are taking today will move us closer to that goal. By contrast, Trump's housing secretary, Ben Carson, infamously expressed concerns about big hairy men trying to find space in women's shelters. Newly inaugurated Gay Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg is bringing gay Navajo Arizona State Representative Orlando Teller onto his staff as Deputy Assistant Secretary of Tribal Affairs. He previously served as Deputy Director of the Navajo Department of Transportation and was a member of the state legislature's Indigenous Peoples and LGBTQ caucuses. Teller was active in Biden's presidential campaign. He even got to introduce Cher at a fundraising concert. He said at the time, I was actually trying to be calm. Inside, I was a screaming queen, just giddy as I'll get out. His paternal grandfather was one of the famous Native American code talkers who helped disseminate critical military information undecipherable to the Axis during World War II. Teller is the second member of the Navajo Nation to join the Biden cabinet, while Leah Johns was named director of the Office of Indian Energy in the U.S. Department of Transportation. The Navajo Times quoted Navajo Nation President Jonathan Nez saying, Words cannot express how proud we are of these two young Navajo professionals. Teller told the Blade newspaper that elevating indigenous nations by the Biden administration only invigorates and encourages me to do more. Representation matters. The new deputy assistant secretary is currently recovering from COVID-19 and working from home after being hospitalized last year. He lost his mother to the pandemic in December. The issue of transgender girls participating in school sports is roiling in a few U.S. states. Some lawmakers claim that trans girls should be banned based on their alleged advantage over cisgender girls. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki responded in no uncertain terms during one of her daily briefings this week. The loaded questions about the controversy came from a Fox Radio News reporter. Does the president have a message for local school officials on dealing with these kind of disputes that are already starting to arise? Between uh, you know, trans girls who are competing and cis girls in a level playing field, it's particularly in high school sports when it leads to college scholarships. Is there any kind of messaging or clarification that the White House wants to give on the executive order? I would just say that the president's belief is that uh, trans rights are human rights, and that's why he signed that executive order. Uh, and in terms of the determinations by universities and colleges, I would certainly defer to them. That was White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki. Finally, the government of New Zealand is celebrating LGBTQ pride in an especially festive way. New Zealand Post has issued a progress stamp combining different multicolored pride flags. It also marks the 35th anniversary of the passage of the Homosexual Reform Act that decriminalized same-gender sex. The progress stamp was created by Daniel Kazar. He combined the original rainbow pride flag designed by Gilbert Baker in 1978 with the pink, blue, and white colors of the trans pride flag created by Monica Helms in 1999. Then he added black and brown stripes from the More Color, More Pride flag designed by Amber Hikes to highlight racism within queer communities. The stamp is available online at nzpost.co.nz. Sweden became the first country to issue a rainbow pride flag stamp in 2016. Spain issued a special stamp to celebrate Pride Month in 2020. The release of the Pride stamp in New Zealand coincides with the celebration of Auckland Pride throughout the month of February and Wellington Pride during the last two weeks of March. With the victories of 13 out candidates in October's national elections, Kiwis are rightfully claiming the title Queerest Parliament on the Planet. That's News Wrap, global queer news with attitude, for the week ending February 13th, 2021. Follow the news in your area and around the world. An informed community is a strong community. News Wrap is recording remotely during the COVID-19 emergency. It's written by Greg Gordon, edited by Lucia Chappell, produced by Brian DeShazer, and brought to you by you. Help keep us in ears around the world at thiswayout.org, where you can also read the text of this newscast and much more. And you can listen to News Wrap each week by subscribing to our This Way Out radio channel on YouTube. For This Way Out, I'm Joe Bainline. Stay healthy. And I'm Paula Thomas. Stay safe.